it's weird. They're, they're, they discover this weird island where stuff is happening. And it's like, okay, well, we gotta go investigate. It seems like Reploids, who are sort of the human-robot hybrids that populate the world in 21, 21XX, um, they're having their souls sucked out. And it's just like, okay, this isn't normal. Um, go investigate and see. And then you figure out there are two people, Gareth and Burkana, who are sort of controlling the souls of um, the Reploids on the island to essentially gain power. And your mission is to basically stop them. Um, in extreme mode, you realize it's Sigma. Who would have thought? Um, but in this mode, we actually fight Burkana as the final boss for X. Um, so Extreme Two is really uh, unique as it go as it goes for the X series, um, given that it's the only it and its predecessor, Extreme One, are the only Mega Man X games that are actually in eight, uh, that are uh, eight bit titles. Um, this is the intro stage, as custom to the Mega Man X series. This is, um... I forget the actual name, because one of my friends jokingly calls him Mega Skeletor. Um... Skullhead, I think it's called? I forget. I just put this place intro stage anyway. Um... It's pretty simple. One of the reasons why we don't get... We don't have auto charge on, or any charge shot there, is because the charge shot is its weakness, and it will cause the boss to have invincibility frames, so actually rapid fire is better for that. Uh, with that in mind, we have a little bit of plot here, unskippable text, about 50 seconds, so if there's anything you quickly want to shout out, uh, feel free to. Oh, sorry, never mind. Well, for those of you who don't know, um, we are supporting, um, ah, gosh, I'm trying to, I see the acronym, but I'm trying to remember the exact name of the uh, charity. Uh, we are supporting, um, To Write Love on Her Arms, which is a, um, a, uh, a charity focused on men um, promoting mental health and providing services to those currently in need, and I think more than ever now, given the conditions of um, the coronavirus at pandemic, it's really important that we support people uh, in in uh, times of need like this, especially when um, ugh, especially when stuff like um, quarantine can really make you feel socially isolated and. Um, if you could, please make sure to support, uh, donate by going to the Tiltify page. All donations will go direct to To Write Love on Her Arms. Anyways, um, so for the X, for X mission 100%, we actually start off in Volt Catfish, um, because Volt Catfish has the most useful uh, armor part, we would, I would argue, uh, and that is the uh, leg part. The leg part is super useful um, for X's mission, and just for X in general, because it provides an air dash. Uh, normally, X Zero would actually have this air dash from the very start, but X does not. So it's really important you get this because it makes uh, movement just a lot easier in this game. Um, there is no dedicated dash button, unlike most of the Mega Man X titles in this game, because you're working with the Game Boy Color, you have a limited set of buttons, and so they just didn't include a dash button. They did in Extreme 1, but it was the start button, and that's why that, and you can probably see or sorry, the select button, and you can see why that's a, that's like a really, really dumb thing. Actually, no, it's not select, it's start. They made the start button dash. That I still don't understand. And the menu button is select. And that really is inconvenient. So there are three main ways of dashing in Extreme 2. Um, you can double tap left or right, and that allows you, that is difficult to like spam, to like do in quick succession, but it's very easy to get dash jumps from that, which are still super useful. Um, you know, you're jumping with dash speed. Uh, in Extreme, um, in Extreme 2, uh, again, because they, they don't have a dash button, you can also double, you can also press down and A to dash, and that's good for mashing, but not particularly good for, um, dash jumps, because you can't jump out of them at all. Um, and finally, because we've unlocked the, uh, leg parts, we're able to double tap A to do an air dash, and the air dash is super useful because it allows for, um, just, it's, it's arguably the easiest way to get speed, and also, um, it's useful to access some areas with greater ease than you could otherwise. So knowing how to transfer between these three forms of movement is super important for the run. Anyways, so the 100% category involves us getting all the, um, armor parts, all the, um, It involves getting all the armor pieces, all the sub tanks, all the um, heart tanks or heart—I forget what it's called. Um, I think it's heart tank. Yeah, it's heart tank. Um, heart tanks for uh, in X's four stages. Um, we don't have to do anything in zero or in zero's four stages for this category because this is X only. 
Although we do get to play a zero a little bit near the end, um, but that's irrelevant to the 100% category. So um, this category is slightly RNG based, um, mainly because of boss patterns being a little bit less forgiving than in other areas in this game. Oh gosh. You can see I have pretty low health right now, and this is not going to go well. Whew, there we go. So yeah, Volt Catfish is a little bit annoying to fight as X normally, because you only have the, you only have the X Buckster, really. Um, and so you need to be very careful with uh, how you move and how exactly you, um, you combat. Uh, the boss patterns can be a little bit funky sometimes, uh, but we actually did pretty de decent there. So now I'm gonna go to the shop. Uh, this is the part shop. This is like reminiscent of X5, actually. Which is quite funny because, again, X5 came out roughly about like a few months before this game did. Um, and so this has elements of the PSX games in it, which is kind of amazing for an 8 bit title. Uh, but I bought the... Uh, oh, I actually paused on the first frame. Nice. Um, I'm going to equip uh, X Buster plus one. This makes X's uh, Buster shot more powerful. Does four damage um, per shot, and that's a little bit better. Um, we... Oops. That's okay. I jumped a little bit low there. Um, but essentially, with the X Buster uh, part plus one, um, we get a little bit more damage to our shot, and that's super useful not only for bosses, but also for uh, just defeating enemies in general. Uh, now that we're underwater, this is underwater, um, we have a little bit, our sort of momentum's a little bit funky. Um, not to mention, I'm playing on the Japanese release, and if you've played X1 or are familiar with the stage music, this is not Launch Octopus's theme. This is uh, Flame Mammoth's theme. Um, for some reason, on the Japanese release of this game, they swap those two tracks. So in Flame Mammoth's stage, we're going to hear Launch Octopus's theme. So in order to get the um, armor piece here, which is the body piece... Oop. Come on. So I can actually go around like that, instead of having to actually defeat the um, section normally. If I go around like that, I can go down below there before the thing starts exploding, and that allows me to finish it up a little bit quicker. I need to get some of these. Um, I need to get enough drops, just from luck, throughout this run to buy the X Buster Plus 2 before the Burkana stages. Uh, the X-Buster Plus 2 uh, only unlocks in the shop once you have a thousand souls. So, like, the drops that we have throughout the stage that are both for weapon energy and health energy uh, give you certain amounts of souls which actually act as, um, currency. And so, uh, a single drop, like a single, um, piece, as you'll see, like, if I have, like, one drop, um, like that, that's four. A double drop is eight, and a triple drop is sixteen. Um, we need to get 200 or so from luck in order to, uh, get the X Buster plus two by the point I wanted. But even if the, even if I don't, I can go ahead and grind for souls in one of the later stages, which is useful, but obviously it's best to get the, get it here. I'm going to swap over to triple, uh, triad thunder, or tri thunder rather, um, because that is the weakness for this boss, launch octopus. Um, there is a there is a different weapon we could have we could use if we were in something like extreme mode. Uh, the neon tiger's weapon, which is the last maverick we fight in this order, uh, makes this boss uh, a lot easier to fight because um, it prevents uh, launch octopus from doing this move, which is a bit time a big time waster. This move honestly just sucks. <laughs> Um, but you can use um, Neon Tiger's weapon and prevent um, uh, Launch Octopus from actually doing that move by cutting off his arms, which is kind of kind of rough. But yeah, that's the second stage done for Extreme 100%. I'd like to have a moment to quick read off uh, about the charity. Sweet. Yeah, go right ahead. I tried my best to from memory <laughs> while you uh, were away. Okay. Oh, Sorry. Thanks. Yeah, I had to use the morning restroom. <laughs> Uh, so every uh, dollar uh, donated during DPX does go directly to the right love on her arms. They are a nonprofit movement dedicated to presenting hope and finding help for people struggling with depression, addiction, self-injury, and suicide. 
They exist to encourage, inform, inspire, and also invest directly into treatment and recovery. Uh, this year is more important than ever uh, for uh, charities like To Write Love on Arms to provide invaluable resources to those in need. And every cent that you donate can help save other people out there. So get those donations in throughout the whole day. We have raised already far more money than I ever expected to be possible for, for this event. So thank you to the generous community. Thank you to all the runners. Thank you to Focus Sight Art, current runner, and who ran Sonic 06 earlier in the marathon. Uh, none of this would be possible without all of you. And thank you for having me as well. Um, I should mention right now what I'm doing. Um, I can't actually get all... This is the one stage that we kind of have to return to later in the run. So um, I'm only getting two of the like three major collectibles here, and that's the heart piece, or not the heart piece, the heart tank. And the sub tank, uh, the sub tank basically acts as a weapon, as sort of like a health uh, store, as in it basically allows me to, if I have excess drops, I can uh, main store them in my um, sub tank and uh, get them for later. This stage is a good, um, a good stage to introduce um, a small little uh, time saver. We don't really rely on it because it's frame perfect as far as we can tell. But sometimes you notice that X, sometimes after I like, like here. After I dash, sometimes X like jumps with really with a lot of speed. That is known as a momentum jump. Essentially, if you dash and then the frame right before you land, basically you jump again, you'll be able to maintain your dash speed and your jump. I am not doing this boss properly. Here we go. So the weakness for Flame Mammoth is uh is the um, launch octopus uh, weapon. I forget what it's called. It says MT, but I don't know what that means. Something's running it out. Um, but the uh, momentum jumps, while they're fast, uh, they're just, it's dependent upon how quickly you fall and a bunch of other factors that are kind of difficult to maintain. Um, so it's not relied upon, but if you get some momentum jumps in your movement, that's still like an advantage. It's still nice to get, and it looks really cool. But we don't rely upon it because of how difficult um, it is to get. The Taz does a lot of them, of course, but... So, for instance, you can see I'm doing, I did a momentum jump there just for, you know, cool. Also, it's why I air dash a fair amount sometimes, because the air dash, I feel like, is the easiest way to get a momentum jump. Because you can sort of time it more often. Oh, yeah, there are right armors in this game, like in the, um, X Games previous. Um, they act it a bit is... weirdly. They, yeah, uh, don't... Gonna... Sorry. Go ahead. Oh, I was gonna say, it's crazy how similar... Uh, the the stages are to uh, Mega Man X. Yeah, I mean the stages. The to be fair, uh, the stages are actually um, well not fully recycled. There is some new stuff. All the bosses come from previous Mega Man X games, and so do most of the stage or all the stage motifs. The only stage that I know is completely like unique in terms of like not similar at all to its SNES counterpart um, is um, Blast Hornet. That's a completely unique layout and motif. It's not at all like Blast Order in X3, but all the all the Mavericks come from previous uh, the SNES games specifically. Yet the features in the game are like the PSX games, and it has music from all the SNES trilogy, which again it, it's a really interesting title because of that. Um, so yeah, this is based off. Although again, the stage layouts themselves are unique, but the motifs and like music and stuff aren't. Um, they did their best for what they could do with a with an 8-bit platform, which I think is really admirable. It's it's very authentic and it feels very um, smooth for a 8-bit title, especially considering. I mean, you've seen the movement I've been doing. I've had no dash button, which is super awkward for an X series game. And everything's so smooth. It's not. It doesn't look jerky. It looks like everything flows really well. Evil Dust fans, right? It is Marine Tornado. I just forget the name. Sorry. It's Marine Tornado. That's correct. So yeah, this is Neon Tiger. Uh, Neon Tiger is pretty much we just use the X Buster because again, it's I sorry I got it wrong. It's three hits um, per shot I think now. Three points of damage, not four. Four is the later but when we get X Buster one and two together. Like that. And that's our final Maverick, but that's not the um, I've been forgetting to split this entire time. That's fun. Um, uh, it's not our final uh, stage visit. Because we actually still have to go back to a stage to get the last armor piece, which is in Flame Mammoth stage. Uh, what we got here, the armor piece we got here using Flame Mammoth's weapon, 
uh, by burning down that tree is the headpiece, which allows us to break bricks with our head. Um, this is the area I couldn't access in Flame Mammoth stage, so I have to go back to Flame Mammoth right now. It's also a good point to check my souls to see if I have enough to buy X Buster Plus 2. Um, so I'm going to go back and buy X Buster Plus 2. Or I'm going to go through this and see what I get. See what I have in Mammoth after I get the armor piece, and then grind for souls if I need more. I probably will need more. Just looking at this, but hopefully not. Uh, these drops, these here are consistent drops and they give 20, so I always try to get them where possible. Yeah, I'm gonna go up here. This is the final armor capsule, and you'll see that X transforms into his full set of armor. The sprite changes as soon as you get all four. So once that happens, you will have gotten all four, of course. And so yeah, that's a full armor set. Let's see how many souls I have. I need to get 20 more. Okay, that shouldn't be too bad. That's actually pretty decent overall. Okay, that's not bad. Let me just see what I can get um, from drops here. Okay, that's 84. 88. Okay, now I'm going to need to grind a bit more. That's okay, though. Ninety-two. Yeah, that's enough. So I can go to the shop. I can buy X Buster Plus Two. I can go enter Rakana Sage. There are three sections to this. Um, I'm going to equip X Buster Plus Two now, um, and we're going to go through this area. This is a pretty clear. Like it's pretty. This stage is very, uh, not linear, but like it's direct, like you pretty much just go directly to the end. And you'll get to see all the advantages. One of the things I didn't mention about the foot parts is that it also allows for an up dash. Uh, you can like, like an X3, you can um, dash upward as well, which is super useful for certain parts of this uh, final stage, of the final stages. I don't even know how they would expect you to have done one of these sections without the up dash, honestly, as you'll see. I'll point it out when we get to it, but yeah, we're approaching the end game. Um, there are three Burkana stages. Burkana, I think it's called like the uh, like the fortress stages. I think they're known as. Yeah, but um, I also chose specifically 100% here because it's a lot safer on the second boss that we'll see here, um, Isaz and Zawilo, which is a quite infamous boss. It's a lot safer if you do the 100% category. And so we have Velgarder, which is the boss before Sigma in X1 just suddenly here. Very cool. Cool dog. And we just use X-Buster. Uh, because we have X-Buster 1 plus 2 equipped, we do about, I think it's 5 or 6 damage. It's quite a lot. All bosses in this game take 32 damage to defeat. I found this dog. I agree. And totally that not foreshadowing. Like, who? Sigma who? One thing I also failed to mention is that there's a nice little menu manipulation. I'll mention it after this, because this is one of the major... This game doesn't have any glitches, nor that many skips, honestly, but this is one of the cooler ones. This is called Platform Skip. Gonna try for it. So instead of going on this platform, I'm gonna hit here. And there we go. That's a Platform Skip. Doesn't require the uh, Momentum Jump, but the Momentum Jump surely helps, uh, if you can get it. Yeah, so we only have a limited amount of invincibility frames there, and so you basically just need to get hit at the right spots to avoid going on that platform. Very cool. Small time save, but, you know, this game is fairly short, so it adds up. Um, this is one of the other places where I feel like you kind of needed the up dash to do this properly. You can, like, do some jumps here without the up dash. But, like, stuff like this, like, how would they have expected you to do it without this? kind of, like, you kind of need it, I feel. It's possible, but not easy if you don't have that. Also, yeah, the X-Buster 1 plus 2 equipped as a whole, like, both together, do really good damage together, and so it makes this section a lot easier. Also, yeah, Lava. Ooh. I want to limit the amount of damage X takes. Not to, I don't have to, like, worry too, too much, but enough. Worrying enough is good. Actually, going to switch over. That's the wrong weapon. 
I'm gonna go do some menuing here. I'm gonna switch back to X Buster, and then I'm gonna go into the menu and swap to zero. Why am I swapping to zero? Well, in the X mission, it basically assumes your partner character got everything in their story, so zero here has zero final. Zero final is a super useful power-up in, in uh, extreme mode, for instance. So I'm gonna go over here, and I'm going to then switch back. That's allowed me to get some extra hits on uh, the mini boss, or the boss here. Oh, I'm a bit worried about my health. This is not looking good. Oh, okay. Well, we have another life. Yeah, I was trying my best. I, I was realized you can't actually move the... You can swipe at the, uh, the, uh, horn, or sorry, not the horn, the, um, drill with zero, but not with X. And so I'm going to try doing X's pattern again. So I can uh, shoot the face like that, and then the one up here. These are Izez and Zawilo. Forget which one's which, but that's their names. And you can just shoot from the back like that and uh, destroy the boss that way. Again, much easier once you have the uh, armor piece, which reduces damage by half, and also the uh, X Buster 1 plus 2. But even then, this boss can be quite annoying. So one thing I was mentioning, I'm actually instantaneously menuing here in some places because I can hold like a direction on the D-pad as I load into like the white screen flashes, as that white screen flashes. Um, I can like hold a direction and it will immediately input that on the next frame, like the frame I load into the menu, which is pretty cool. It makes menuing, a, it, it adds this little complexity to menuing and it's, it's nice. It's a really small time saver, but again, appreciated. So I'm going to go here as a X. This is the final stage, so um, we have, after we defeat this boss, that's time. So yeah, we have Burkana here saying, oh, stuff. Uh, the, the coolest thing about, like, extreme mode in this game is that depending on which character you finish as, that changes which area you go into. But because we're in X mission, it will always go into X's area. Uh, X's area is also shorter to go into in extreme mode because you have only a little bit of dialogue here, whereas you have an entire talk with Iris and, Z and Zero together in Zero's mission, and also if you select Zero section in Extreme Mode. Um, not to mention, in order to uh, do true 100% in Extreme Mode, you actually need to do X's mission, not Zero's. Or X's part here, not Zero's, because uh, X here has a secret capsule. Ooh, fun. Capcom loves those secret capsules, though. So yeah, this is the one area, I don't know, I don't know how they expected you to do that without the up dash. Like, if someone could explain that to me, I would really be appreciative. I do not know how they would expect you at all to do that without the up dash. That seems like almost built to fail. <laughs> Alright, so we're approaching the end of the game here, but this isn't the end of this section. I'm just going to jump up here. Love myself some bats. Oh, this is a laser. No, it's not. Uh, and this is the... Um... This is the uh, secret capsule that allows you to, do the to get the Shoryuken and Hadouken, but we don't actually use it at all in this mission, uh, or this mode at all, because it requires charge shots. And it's just generally, it's not like an instant kill like other, uh, like in the other games. It's sort of, it's not completely useless, but it's kind of useless. Um, it's also an extreme one, but it's slightly more useful there. It does like four damage, which isn't that, m that much, honestly. Anyways, so this is the final boss of the uh, thing, so get ready on time soon. Um, if you've ever hated the alphabet as a child, uh, yeah, she weaponizes the alphabet. That's what I'd like to think about it. So she's gonna throw out- she has a few different patterns. She can throw out a spike ball, throw out some Bs, or throw out some As. Um, if you get hit by the B or the A, that disables that specific button. So we have an A here. As are pretty easy to get rid of, comparatively. Bs are a lot harder. And yeah, you don't want those buttons disabled, but you can just jump at, like, height. And get it done that way. Oh, come on. And that's time. All right, 20... 24 about 4. that. 24... 5.404, roughly, yeah. Yeah, well, that was my first turn of that category ever, for fun fact. Fun fact, I have oh. never ran this category before. <laughs> well, congratulations. And you, you get this amazing face. I love this face. <laughs> this is my favorite face in the entire game. I, I'm just going to leave this here as the ending. I don't know why, but this makes me <laughs> laugh so much. It's just like, yep, I did it. I'm X. Hmm. Amazing. But yeah, so that's technically a PB. I mean, it's my first run of that ever because I was that's like, let's learn 100% for this because it's slightly more interesting. And yeah, not it wasn't perfect, but it wasn't bad either. So. I loved it. It looked great. And I'd never seen that before. I might actually look into picking this up and uh, 
playing it at least casually because it looks like a lot of fun and it looks like uh absolutely looks like it'll give me that old school uh x uh mega man x uh for the snes vibes which i just played so much as a kid yeah it's it's quite fun um and i think ex I, I personally love extreme 2 more than extreme 1 but i recommend trying both games seeing what you prefer extreme 2 1 is basically sort of like just 8-bit x1 to be honest uh it has stages from x2 but it f just feels a lot like x1 i think it feels a bit clunkier because you actually don't have any air dashing and air dashing i think is super it makes a lot easier to move around in this game so but yeah, that was Extreme 2. Thank you so much for having me. I've been Focus Sight. Um, keep, make sure to keep donating and keep watching. Um, and I wish you all the best for the rest of the marathon. Thank you so much, Focus. Uh, have a great rest of your day. And we'll be back next with uh, Baby Kaizo World. Um, any percent. Uh, Super Mario World Kaizo hack. Thank you so much. Mm -hmm.